Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a bench power supply using a computer power supply. Now, this one is from a desktop computer. If you can go with a unit from a workstation, that will be much more better because workstation power supplies are very reliable and the output voltages are going to be, you know, close to the actual voltages, which is plus 12 volt, plus 3.3 and plus 5 volts. These are the three voltages which are going to be available when you make this uh, bench power supply. Now bench PSUs are useful for a whole lot of things. If you want to test something, say a component which is going to be installed in your car before you actually install it in the car and you want to test it out in your bench, a bench power supply like this is going to be very helpful. I built one a few years back using a Corsair uh, power supply and it is working fine. I've used it to test a whole lot of things like uh, infotainment unit, then um, the HID projector units and things like that. So it's very handy when you want to test it out in your bench before you install it in your car. And you could make one for dirt cheap. There's not going to be much uh, cost involved except for this power supply, which you can, you know, get it off a discarded computer or something. And you're going to be needing these uh, binding posts, which are available for 20 to 25 bucks a piece. They are available in various colors and uh, shapes and sizes. I got this from a local electronics uh, shop here that deals with components. Now, the next thing you want to know is you've got a power supply. How do you know if it is working? It's actually pretty simple. All you've got to need is uh, a paper clip with uh, the insulated part removed or a cable. Connect the power supply's uh, main power cord to the AC inlet. I'm using a simple uh, cable like this. Now, if you pay close attention to this uh, main 24 pin connector right here, now this is actually numbered starting from 1 if this is your connector right here from 1 to 12 and 13 to 24 you're going to short terminal 16 and 17 to test if your power supply is working so all you got to do is insert it via here see that the fan is spinning so this is actually confirming that your power supply is working now, if you pay close attention to the readings indicated here, you will see that this unit has different voltages indicated. One is plus 3.3 volt, one is plus 5 volt and plus 12 volts. Now, 12 volts are available across different rails because that's the one that powers your uh, power hungry graphics cards and, uh, you know, your CPU, etc. The components that basically draws a whole lot of power from your uh, power supply. So. We are going to be using these three voltages to build this uh, bench power supply. One, you will see a bunch of cables like this. You are not going to be needing any of those. What you will do is, uh, you know, most power supplies have these cables which are color coded across any brand for that matter. So what you will do is you will trim this uh, cable somewhere, say about uh, four to five inches from the outlet of the unit right here. Okay, now that you cut the cables, just keep these aside. Now, this is quite an old unit, so it's very dusty. Now, the next thing you've got to do is uh, open this unit up. Now, these four screws are for the 120mm fan. So, you're going to have to remove this one right here. Whoa, that's a lot of dirt. So this, what you see right here, this big fat unit, that is your filter capacitor. And uh, believe me, you do not want to mess with this because if you are going to open this uh, PCB, the other side, you're going to have to discharge this capacitor because if you have tested it or otherwise, there's going to be a lot of charge stored in it and it can be very fatal. So please be uh, warned, do not mess with this uh, capacitor. If you are opening it, please discharge it. So we'll just be back after cleaning this, uh, you know, with a blower because there's going to be a lot of dust and it's not a nice thing. So I have managed to clean it to some extent, not the best, but uh, this should do for uh, this DIY here. Now all computer power supplies use a standard color coding for these cables for different voltages. 
Now, yellow is for 12 volts and uh, ironically, there's just two yellow cables. I think workstation units would have more. So yellow is for uh, 12 volts, orange, these are for 3.3 uh, volt and uh, these red you see here, they are for uh, 5 volts. And the black, you must have guessed, it is ground. And uh, the green one, the lone green unit here, this is for turning on the power supply. So that's the color coding. Now, certain power supplies, you know, it could make do with uh, a dummy resistive load. So some people connect a resistive load to the unit directly. It could be those uh, big uh, 10, 15 watt uh, resistors. It will gradually get hot, but you're not going to be using this unit for a continuous time. It's only for bench testing for a very short while. So that's perfectly safe. Now what we'll do is we'll trim off the unwanted uh, cables. We'll remove it from the base of the board. Now you see all this bunch here. You don't need all these cables. For each binding post for which we are going to tap the terminal, you only need about say four to five cables. So we'll just keep uh, four cables and uh, trim the remaining. Right guys, so let's check this out. Ultimately, you only have these many cables. So like I said, the yellow is for 12 volt, black is for ground, the red one is for 5 volt, green is for starting the unit, and the orange one is for 3.3 volt. Now the next thing you're going to do is uh, bunch the same cables together using a cable tie. Now when it comes to bunching this black wire, I suggest you leave out one because this one is going to get uh, shorter to this green wire here. We are going to solder it. So the unit remains on when you turn it on to the power supply or alternately what you can do is uh, you can also use this as a switch. You already have a switch right here, this main one. Additionally, if you want, you can also, you know, connect this to a regular uh, DC switch, the single pole, single throw type. So I'm just going to be shorting this because I don't need any. So I'll keep aside one black wire for this and bunch the remaining three. So, like I said, uh, you can short these cables. Soldering is going to take a bit of time, although that is like the best joint uh, you can get. Let the soldering iron get heated up in the process. Uh, what we'll do is we'll remove the insulation from these cables. See, the whole idea of using so many cables for one particular post is to ensure that, you know, one wire does not get overloaded uh, when you connect it to a load. Say, for instance, a 12 volt bulb. Now, a 12 volt halogen bulb draws as much as uh, anywhere from 55 to 90 or 100 watts, depending on the kind of bulb you use. So, if you use it for a long time, the cable can get overheated. So, we want the amperage to, you know, get splitted between these rails. So that's the reason why we have a different uh, bunch of cables. You'll also see that this 12 volt cable in uh, contrast is slightly thicker than uh, the other cables. Okay, so because these cables are old, you'll have to, you know, use a blade to strip off that uh, old insulation. So once that's done, just slide the heat shrink sleeve there. We'll, what we'll do is uh, we'll have to, you know, twist these together to form a bunch. Okay, so once you're done uh, bunching the cables like this, the next thing is uh, inserting them into these ring terminals and crimping. They are available in most electronic shops. So cut off uh, whatever extra length of cables are there. Obviously, the whole thing will not uh, get into this uh, ring terminal. So we'll just... So once this has come out from the other end, you'll have to crimp it. You're going to need a crimping tool. Yeah, that's a firm crimp. Repeat this for all these uh, cables. Okay, so we have these uh, ends crimped. We have connected the power supplies uh, outlet uh, power on switch 
the next thing is uh, yeah that is going to be a little harder you're going to have to drill four holes here because this is where your binding posts are going to come so notice what is the drill bit that you need for uh, having this particular uh, binding post inserted into this uh, uh, steel uh, sheet here or you're going to have to do some drilling but it's simple because all you've got to use is a high speed steel drill bit it is called as an HSS bit which is used for uh, drilling on uh, steel and not your normal uh, wooden uh, drill bits or concrete drill bits please don't use that that's going to be a waste of time Now the next thing you've got to do is use a center punch so your uh, drill bit can properly center itself before you start drilling and give it a slight knock. So you can see those uh, four holes have been neatly marked and centered. Now we'll drill this. Before drilling I advise you to you know keep a bunch of uh, wooden logs below so you can get support you don't want to mess around so we have the drill bit ready so finally the four uh, holes are ready uh, if you have difficulties uh, you know drilling the best thing would be to just take this enclosure after marking to a machining shop and they would have a vertical drill and uh, they would do it in uh, less than two minutes it's a walk in the park for those guys. So let me just uh, clean this mess up. So guys, the binding posts are secured to this uh, enclosure. Uh, just a word of caution. The other end of this binding post is actually an insulator. So ensure that you know you don't thread all these nuts together because in that case, all of them would get shorted. This insulating piece of uh, plastic which is on this binding post that needs to secure itself with this enclosure so it acts as an insulator and on that you will be doing this uh, threading part of the first nut and on this you will have uh, these terminals and over that you will have the second nut threaded so these are insulators ensure that you do not uh, thread this uh, nut directly into this uh, enclosure in which case all of them would get shorted your power supply may go bust so please be careful about that okay so it spins just turn it off put this back in place end result of it on so this one is the ground unit and this is 3.3 5 and 12 volt so so there you go I'll also do a demo with uh, you know a uh, halogen bulb just to show you how it works so i have this uh, h4 uh, 5560 philips uh, halogen bulb here so and i've connected it to the ground and uh, the high terminal so that's one this is a typical uh, use case uh, if you want to test out uh, any bulb or uh, you know I had a problem with my car's uh, HID um, unit the xenon uh, unit so I extensively used the Corsair uh, bench power supply that I had for testing another one this is something you really don't want to test out because it's a horn after all and it is meant to work
really you don't want to because it's a horn and uh, it would work but just to demonstrate oh this one is uh, for my zen by the way it's a hella horn and uh, this is where uh, you know i used it to test uh, my uh, infotainment unit of my car and uh, while especially uh, when i had the usb uh, connected to the rear of the unit so that's uh, all i guess so that uh, sort of uh, completes this uh, diy guys uh, thank you so much guys uh, if you found this uh, diy useful please do give it a thumbs up thank you so much